Okay, Esther chapter 3, coming of the Antichrist. Again, we're going to see Esther is a historical book, and yet it's a book of prophecy. Foretelling what's going to happen in the future to the nation of Israel. And yet it's kind of past history and it's present, present history. I'll show you in a moment. History will repeat itself. Because Israel has not learned to love the Lord their God. After these things, chapter 2, did King Asahurus promote Haman, the son of Hamaditha, the Agadite. Now let's go over to Genesis chapter 36. I'm going to show you something about this guy, Agadite. And he's a man that should not be here. Genesis 36, verse 12. And what we need to learn one thing when we get to Samuel, our rebellion against God may bring forth a future evil. Now, Genesis 36, verse 12. Tima was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, that's Jacob's brother, who hates Jacob. She bare Eliphaz a limonic. That's the first time that's mentioned that's important. These were the sons of Adoa, Esau's wife. That Imelech is an enemy of the children of Israel, and he's an enemy of God. And we're not going to look at the passage tonight, but when Israel's going through the wilderness, Elimelech came up behind the children of Israel and pecked off all the weak ones, all the elderly ones, all the ones who couldn't defend themselves. And this is the battle where Moses went up on the mountain and he had a man on the right and the man kept his hands up while Joshua fought. And the Lord told Moses that Elimelech will be eliminated, but his sins have not been full yet. So, in Deuteronomy 25, we're going in book order here, so we'll see you in a moment. Deuteronomy 25, Haman is one of the great types of Antichrist in the Bible, and he comes from Esau. Now, when Babylon came and destroyed Judah, Deuteronomy 25, 17, Esau stood in the way of the of the Jewish people running and captured them and sold them to Babylon. Chapter 25, verse 17. Remember what Elimelech did unto thee by the way when ye were come out forth of Egypt. How he met thee by the way and smoked the hindermost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee. When thou hast when thou was faint and weary. And he feared not God. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God will give thee rest from all thy enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that it shall that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of the limonic. That means get rid of him. From under heaven thou shalt not forget it. Later on, you're going to wipe him off the map. Problem. 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And because of this disobedience, Elimelech was not wiped off the map. <coughs> Excuse me. 1 Samuel 15, verse 1. Samuel also said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to, to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou to the voice of the, Lord, of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that what Elimelech, there he is, did to Israel, how he laid wait for them in the way when he came up out of Egypt. Now go and smite Imelech and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, 
both slay man. Now get this. Remember this. And women, infant, suckling, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. And verse 9, same chapter. But Saul and the people spared Agag, the best of the sheep, the best of the ox. Saul did not do what he was supposed to do. Saul was supposed to wipe them off the map in Esther chapter 3. Here they are. That's, that's an ag guy. They're of Abimelech. Now watch. Azahurus becomes a type of God. Esther is a type of nation of Israel. The Gentile queen is out. You don't see the Gentile queen in this book. You don't see God. You're not going to see God in the tribulation period. You're not going to see the Gentile in the tribulation period. The, the, the church. Haman, the son of Adathur, said, Agai, and advanced him. Adathurses advanced Haman. The Antichrist and the devil get the advancement of the time of the tribulation by God. Job 1 and 2. Job is 42 chapters. It's the same amount of chapters to the amount of months in the tribulation period. And set his seat. We'll look at that in a minute. Above all the princes that were with him. That seat. Agag Haman seat. Revelation 2, 13. Revelation 2, 13. Now this is important. Because now we're running into the book of Revelation and we're going to run into the Antichrist. Now we're in the church age right now, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 4, the church, the door opens up in heaven. But what could we find in Revelation 2.13? Now read it. I know thy works and where thou dwellest where even Satan's seat is. And thou beholdest fast my name and has not denied the face even in those days where an Antipas was my faithful martyr. Get that with the book of Esther. This all ties in. Who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Now that's 2.13. Now interesting chapter 13.2. I don't know what they call when you reverse the numbers, but this is reversal. The church is gone. It's gone to glory. We're in the tribulation period, Revelation 13, 2. And the title I got out of this chapter of my uh, the Schofield Notes is The Beast That Comes Out of the Sea. That's the Antichrist. Chapter, uh, chapter 13, verse 2. And the beast, there's the Antichrist, which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, the devil. And the dragon, the devil, even gave his power and his seat. And great authority. Is that not what we're just reading in Esther right now? One more place in, in Revelation. Chapter 16, verse 10. Are these not tied together? Does not the Bible say, study to show thyself proved unto God? God throws it here, God throws it there, God throws it there. And when we get in the book of Revelation, we're reading about Esther. Chapter 16, verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. Haman has a seat that's been given advancement by our Hersey. God is going to allow, after the church is gone, God is going to allow Satan to do his work. And Thessalonians, I forget, it's first or second. That man of sin is going to have all powers and be powers, and he's going to mag himself to all the people with signs and wonders, Pentecostal, that he is God. He's even going to die and resurrect himself. So verse 2, chapter 3. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed 
and reverence. Reverence shows up 13 times in the Bible. Reverence. One place we need to look at Psalms 111, 9. We need to look at this. 111, verse 9. And you need to get out of this system. 111, verse 9. Psalms 111, verse 9. Scripture is scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Now we're talking about God. Psalms 111, verse 9. He, God, sent redemption unto his people, Jesus Christ, the Jewish people. He has commanded his covenant forever, Jewish people. Holy, we know what that is, and reverent is his name. Have you ever known somebody in the church where they call their spiritual leader reverend? That's the name of God. Don't you call no man reverend. Because why? Back over here, Esther chapter 3, who's a reverend? Haman, the Antichrist. Type of Antichrist. And reverence Haman, for the king has so commanding concerning him. When that mark comes, there's no other way you can get around with unless you don't take that mark. That's reverencing the the the, uh, uh, the image of the beast. You're going to reverence Haman as. When Nebuchadnezzar said, at the sound of the sat book and all the jukebox music, you fall down and worship the golden image, Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo. Is that not also a type of antichrist and type of tribulation passage? And if you don't, you're thrown into the fire, death. It's all tribulation. It's also all history. When the antichrist starts killing the Jewish people, we're going to look at in a moment, they're going to remember all of a sudden their history. They're going to remember their Bible history. Then they're going to remember Adolf Hitler, World War II. We keep reading. Verse 2. For the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Jews do not, according to the law, and according to the Big Ten, do not reverence, do not fall down, do not bow down before anybody. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo? We're not falling down before that image. Mordecai, I ain't falling down from that man. Nowhere did you see a falling down and a reverence of Moses, of Elijah, of Joshua, or Aaron, or any of them. They fell down before the, the, before the angel of the Lord. They fell down before Jehovah. And that is it. And when people came to Jesus and they fell down before him, he didn't tell them to get up. And when John falls down before the angel, the angel says, hey, 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 no, stop that. No, that's not allowed here. And when Cornelius falls down before Peter, Peter's like, get up. It is taboo for a Jewish man to fall down and bow down before anything. They don't even put faces or image on their coins because they believe it's sacrilegious. Thou shalt have no other, and even though their history is filled with it, they don't. So Mordecai is not doing what he's supposed to be doing according to the standards of the government. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, and unto Mordecai, why transgressest thou the king's command? Why are you breaking the law? And you'll find this in Acts chapter 5, verse 29. We told you not to preach and teach in the name of Jesus. And Peter's response was, we rather obey God than man. That's exactly what Mordecai is going to do. 
Mordecai is going to hold true to the law of Moses and the commandments by God, Jehovah. Though he's going against the government. Now, it came to pass when they spake daily unto him. Daily. <laughs> every day. And he hearkened not unto them. I'm not bowing down before that guy. Nope. Shut up and leave me alone. They told Haman. Evidently, Haman didn't recognize it. They told him. He never knew until they told him. Somebody's going to tell on the Jews in the tribulation period. To see whether Mordecai's matter would stand. And he had told them that he was a Jew. Okay. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not. Okay, now he sees it. Nor did his reverence. Then was Haman full of wrath because he wouldn't fall down and worship him. What's going to get the Antichrist angry? They're not worshiping me. And it's going to be very taboo when he opens up that 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 curtain, that veil, when he's in the most holy place. Say hi, here I am. No one was no one is to be in that but the high priest once a year. So this is what gets Haman upset. And he thought, scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. All right, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to torture, I'm going to ridicule Mordecai only. That's it. That's all I'm going to, just him. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Uh, he's Jewish, he's Hebrew, he's Israeli. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Asahurus, even the people of Mordecai. Genocide. We won't get rid of genocide. You're not getting, it's coming back in the tribulation period. This is exactly what Adolf Hitler has done. This is exactly what Babylon tried to do with, with the children of Israel. This is what every enemy of Israel has tried to do in Israel's history. And what I'm going to say this reverently because I pray for the Jews. I pray for their souls. They are God's people. They will always be God's people. But when the Antichrist is finished with those Jews, Hitler is going to look like a, a little boy. And the numbers that died of Jewish people in the Holocaust is only going to be very minor to the numbers that are going to be killed in the tribulation period. And the only salvation those Jews are going to get will be Gentile nations that are going to help them and they don't even know what they're doing. Now the question is, all right, Haman didn't know they were Jews. Are the people that are going to help the Jews in tribulation period, are they going to realize, are they Jews? Are they purposely going to help them because they're Jews or just feel sorry for them as a group of people? And meanwhile, remember, there's 144,000 Jewish virgin males running around with the prophecy, with the word of God. And it's not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's you got to do the works. You got to do the temple. You got to have works. You also got to have faith in Jesus. Problem is, in order to go to the temple, guess who's sitting at the temple now ready to kill you and offer you and drink your blood? There'll be a Catholic mass later, and it won't be wine, it won't be hooch, it won't, it will be the literal blood of Jewish people. And when the mass today said this becomes the literal body of Jesus, they're actually saying, I'm drinking Jewish blood. They don't realize Acts 20, 28, it's God's blood, it's not literal blood, but that's what they're saying. And the tribulation period is going to come forth. They're going to drink literal Jewish blood. They can't drink water. The water's turned to blood. Thanks to Moses. In the first month, that is month Nisan, in the 12th year, Jewish number 12, of King Azahurus, they cast purr, 
This is five years after chapter 2, verse 16. And Purr is a lot. They're going to have a lottery on the time to kill the Jews. We, we looked at the word lot. I mean, yeah, lot many times. Draw straws, shake dice, odd number, black ball, eeny, eeny, miny, mo. Before Haman, from the day to day, every day they're doing this. And from month to month, going on to months, to the 12th month, that is the month Adar, it took a year. They're going to be in talks for a year about how and when to kill those Jews. And Haman said unto the king as hers, there's certain people, Jewish, Hebrews, scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in the provinces of the kingdom. He doesn't tell them who they are. He says there's a certain people. Diverse. They have different appetites than we do. They don't eat like us. They don't dress like us. And their laws are diverse from all people. Absolutely correct. And when the devil quotes scripture, he quotes it correct. Neither keep they the king's law. That's a lie. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. Don't allow them to live. Let's get rid of them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. Look at that. I want them people destroyed. That is the motive of the Antichrist. That has been the motive of the devil since Sarai could not have a baby. And I will pay, I will pay 10,000 talents of white silver. Because Jesus Christ is going to be sold out for silver. Silver in the Bible is the price of redemption being bought back. The hand of those that have the, the charge of the business. Today we use the word credit card. Who's ever in charge of the king's treasury. Of the business to bring it to the king's treasury. The king took his ring from off his hand. And gave it unto Haman the son of Hamadiah, the Agagite. Now, if you un unlearn your Bible, what's that say? The Jew's enemy. There he is. There's the Antichrist. A picture of. And the king, he walks in and says, King, I want him dead. Okay, here's my ring. And that ring was certification. It would be put into wax. It would be put into ink in the certification of that king. The king asked no questions. Now, when we go back to chapter 2 real quick in verse 23, when inquisition was made of the matter, somebody's trying to hurt me? Look into it. They're guilty? All right, hang them. King, I want these people dead. They break the laws. Okay, here you go. The king is being foolish. This is the same foolishness of, Dan of Daniel's king. King, I want you to sign this law that no one can pray for 30 days except you. But no one can pray. If they do, they get thrown into the den of lions. The king didn't look into those matters either. There are going to be foolish laws put into act in the tribulation period and no one's going to think about them and no one's going to go, oh, okay. Against the Jew, against Mordecai, and against Daniel. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. And the world won't think twice about, oh, this, this law is against, is against these certain people. All right, no problem. Man, witness to the Jews. Get Try to get Jews saved. Pray for the Jews. Paul says pray for the peace in Jerusalem. Because it's going to be hell on earth literally by the one who's going to hell. The Antichrist. The king took off his ring from his hand and gave it to Haman, the son of Hadadutha, the Agite, the Jew's enemy. Write that down. And the king said unto Haman, the silver, price of redemption, 
is given to thee. I thought he said he was going to pay it. The king turned around and says, I'll give you the silver. Haman was going to pay it. Verse 9, I will pay 10,000 talents. The king says, the silver is given to thee. That's not Haman paying. If I were to say, if, if somebody came to my house and said, sir, I'll, I'll charge you $10 if I can cut you along. Okay, no problem. He comes, cuts along, comes to the door, he says, I'm all fit. Hey, you did a great job. Hands me $10 and walks away. This is how messed up the tribulation period is going to be. Because Satan is in charge. He's the liar. He's the deceiver. He's the murderer. There's going to be no honesty in the tribulation period. That went out with the Holy Ghost. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth. There's no truth in Satan. The world in the tribulation period throughout the entire world is going to be utter, absolute chaos of no nonsense to us that love the world. To the world it would be second nature. The people also to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Do you realize the horror of verse 11? You want to torture them? Do whatever you want to do. You want to rape the women before you torture them and torture while you rape them as they did in World War II? I mean, you read about the Holocaust. I read very few. I, I find it sickening what they did to the Jews. Read what they did to him, and it's absolutely going to be one million more worse than, the, than the, the Holocaust of the Nazis. They say that in the crematoriums over there in Germany, they are made of stone, and I've seen the pictures, and nail prints are in those stones of the Jewish people trying to scratch themselves out of that place. They found that babies were, were, were put to the bottom of the pile, trying to give them a little more life than the adults. It's going to be grossness of horror for the Jewish people in the tribulation period. Seems good. Let the devil do what he wants to do. You imagine the devil had free will, what he's going to do. God says, okay, do whatever you want to do. Look what he did to Job just by the permission of God. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day, that's an interesting rebellious number, of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded the king's lieutenants to the governors that were on every providence and to the rulers of every people of every providence according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, they wrote it, you know, they pressed one for English, they pressed two for Aramaic, they pressed three for Arabian, they pressed four for whatever the language is. They got the same thing going on here in the land of Adahers as they have in America. There's multiple languages. In the name of the king Adahers was it written and sealed it with the king's ring. Now notice, it says king scribe. The king did not write the order. The king is absent. God is absent. He says, you have all authority to do what you want to do. They took the signet, the ring, and they signed it in the king's name. The king is not there. God is not there. Job 1 and 2, he has given all authority and all power to the devil to do what he wants to do. That's why I go witness to people, tell them about Jesus. Because if the rapture happens in my time, the people I'm meeting today are going to go through the seven years of absence. And you're not going to beat it with a computer. You're not going to beat it with your lily pea brain. And if you're a Gentile, you're going to be more in favor of the Antichrist because they're more in favor of darkness, John chapter 3 says. I thank God that God has found me a ministry that works with, with witnessing the Jews. And I pray for that. And the letters were sent by post. That would be the postman, mailman. 
into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little, didn't we just read that somewhere? That's what God told Samuel to go tell Saul. Wipe them utterly out. Saul didn't do it. The Antichrist will try to. Oh, listen, this is World War II right now, verse 13. This is the Nazis. They didn't get them all. Antichrist ain't going to get them all, but he's going to get many more. Women, ch little children, women, in one day. He won it in one day. We are now in a great tribulation period. Even upon the 13th, that's a good number, of the 12th month, 12 Jewish, the girl 12 years old, she was dying, and there was a woman had had a, a bloody flux for 12 years. Which is in the month Adar, to take the spoil, rob them, you ever seen the pictures on the internet of all the wedding rings that there are buckets and pails of rings that they stolen off the Jewish people before they tortured them? There are pails full of the golden teeth of the Jewish people that they knocked out of their mouth before they tortured them. There are there are museums out there where they're taking the skin of Jewish people and made lampshades out of them. Made a pocketbooks out of them. Not only is he going to kill the Jews, but they're going to rob them. Take the spoil of them for a prey. Now this is why Jesus said, hey, if you take care of my brethren, I'm going to take care of you. When a person helps a Jew in the tribulation period, they're putting their own life on the line. And it probably be far worse treatment to them. For helping these people for a prey that's an animal term for searching out other animals the copy there's been a lot of copies in Ezra Nehemiah and Esther of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people they should be ready against that day wanted you saw those signs dead not alive, wanted dead Jewish people. And we'll pay you money. And it'll be proclaimed in the newspapers, it'll be proclaimed in the post office, it'll be proclaimed everywhere. You kill Jews, we'll, we'll take care of you. The post, the mailmen, the delivery people, went out being hastened by the king's commandment. And the decree was given in Shishan the palace, and the, kings, uh, the king and Haman sat down to drink. But the city of Shinshan was perplexed. All right, here's the king. He doesn't, I mean, now we lose the typology. All types doesn't go 1%. The Bible says that the Antichrist is going to sit down and he's going to have a policy. He's going to make a peace policy at a table. I forget which prophet says that. And he's going to lie to him because he's a liar. And their table shall be full of vomit. Keep Israel in your prayers, I'm telling you. 